Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back into more talk about the absolute carnage tie-ins to where at this point we're getting into the immortal Hulk who has recently been bonded with the Venom symbiote. And with doing so, this just adds another member to the group chat that's already going on in the mind of Bruce Banner. But in addition to that, we also get a lot more information about what occurred in between the pages of Immortal Hulk and how that ties to Absolute Carnage and doing so really just filling in the gaps between the main series and also the other tie-ins as well. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so just starting off with what we had talked about within Absolute Carnage, when we had seen Carnage posing as Eddie Brock, and to the point of where when they figured it out, he was just like, hey, you know why I'm here. To where at this point, he brings in his squad, and he really thinks that he has the drop on Captain America, Wolverine, The Thing, Spider-Man, and Eddie Brock, which is pretty much everybody from Carnage USA, with the exception of Scorn and also Flash Thompson. But with doing so, Carnage really wasn't aware that Bruce Banner was here. And even upon discovering that Banner was there, Cassidy was just oblivious to his significance. But with following a discussion which Eddie had had with the Venom symbiote to where the symbiote had told him like if you're not strong enough to do what needs to be done then the symbiote would find someone who is strong enough and who is willing to do whatever it takes and with doing so when it jumped over to Banner to whom by the way like as soon as it did Carnage tried to kill him but in this case with him not knowing that Banner is the Hulk and even though Carnage does know who the Hulk is he's really not aware of everything going on with the immortal Hulk but immediately after attempting to kill Banner he quickly realizes that he had crashed the wrong party and that this game of collecting codices just got turned up from medium to extremely hard and somebody just broke the knob off and threw it away and so now with the venom symbiote merging with the immortal hulk there's a few things i want to get into here with one being the symbiote approval process because it's not just banner that this body belongs to but i also want to talk about when banner got here in relation to the immortal hulk series and also play a bit with the idea of the awakening of no to the beginning of the immortal hulk where we'd see this change in the hulk after secret empire and going into avengers no surrender. But so now to start this off, when we start off with Banner, and not so much in his mind, but rather in this venue which he said is provided by the Venom symbiote, which is set up almost like a bridge or middle ground for his consciousness to communicate with the symbiote. And when Banner arrives here to speak to the symbiote, he opens up just by telling him how he got here to the safe house of Rex Strickland. And really just doing so just to kill time until the other Hulks show up and make their way to the venue between the body of Banner and the Venom symbiote. But so when Banner gets into this explanation, it immediately takes us back to the Senate motel which is where we had seen Banner, Jackie McGee, Betty, and Rick Jones go to, which is an arrangement that Joe Fixit had made in order for them to lay low for a while, just after retrieving the body of Rick Jones. And after doing so, Joe Fixit left a note letting Banner know that he would be back in two days, and like both rooms are paid for, but after two days, we gotta find another spot. But during this in-between time, Banner had seen on the news the whole situation with General Ross's body missing, which at the time he thought had something to do with Ross returning from the dead, with him being the Red Hulk and all. But at this point in time, there's no sign of him functioning among the land of the living, which is likely tied to the reason that he stopped being the Red Hulk. Because when Ross was exposed to Extremis, which made Banner your dark green genius, but in the case of General Ross, it had just turned him back to normal. But with seeing this on the news, it does bring it to the attention of Banner, and it puts it on his radar that he needs to find the body of General Ross. And so at this point, we get the quick appearance of Joe Fixit, to whom since his return in the Mortal Hulk, he keeps coming back at the appearance of Banner rather than the Grey Hulk. And when he shows up here, it's no different. But in addition to him sliding through he also mentions again and this time kind of in a joking matter but he mentions again that he's been getting more sunlight and for that reason he's got to dress for the weather which could lead to something big later on and i mean like later later on but as he leaves to bring more hulks into this meeting banner continues with his story picking back up at the motel which at this point in time mind you it's still before rick jones had waken back up and to my understanding within that two-day window when joe fixit said he would return which is mentioned within the tie-in but we actually see happen within the immortal hulk series but during this time when Banner has a conversation with Betty and he mentions that he understands that Betty had found the Hulk by following his scent and that's what led her to him during the time when he was battling with Rick Jones back when he was wearing the abomination like it was from Fashion Nova Men. But with discovering her new ability, Banner comes up with the idea for Betty to use the same method to track down her father, which would take her about 10 hours to get there, but with carrying Banner, it would slow her down and raise their chances of being seen. And so essentially he's just like, okay, we'll just fold me up and drop me off and the other guy will wake up and just take it 
from there. And with doing so, Banner felt no pain, but for the Hulk, different story. But when Banner goes under, we also get a quick reminder of like every time that Banner is killed, he goes to the below place. And much like what we talked about with Brian Banner, recently on the Immortal Hulk playlist, Bruce has visited here a number of times and with doing so, having many conversations with Brian Banner. But a lot of those conversations, even to this day, Bruce just doesn't remember. And so now also, I do feel like I need to mention because it may come back later on. Because with Betty doing this and of course doing this to help, but essentially with her helping and causing pain to the Hulk, she's also doing something that she had promised the Hulk that she would never do again because even back at the time when she had ripped his heart out in order to jumpstart his rejuvenation the Hulk had let her know that that hurt and that she shouldn't do that again and not so much to the literal fact of what she did but more so to the point of the Hulk not wanting pain to come from Betty which in this case once again it did and with doing so Betty went back immediately to look after Rick Jones but we also noticed during this time in the interview if you will with the symbiote that when the Hulk shows up that is still an issue and it's been one of the issues between him and Banner and more specifically your Savage Hulk from like day one, with the Hulk feeling like the only time he's allowed to come out is when he's needed to hurt someone or to be hurt. And I gotta say, he's not wrong, but essentially getting back to the location where all the bodies were dumped, when the Hulk arrives here and he finds the body of General Ross, and immediately after he got the attention of the news, and likely for the reason that he figured that Shadow Base, who would probably try to swoop in and take him up, but if this information was public, then they would more likely avoid being in the public eye. But my thing is this, like with the Hulk calling the news and hiding, one, it's pretty cool to know that looking back on Absolute Carnage, that it was the Hulk who called the news, which came on in the bar at the time. But also in addition to that, with him doing it as an anonymous tip, it's like, could you imagine like if he didn't and the Hulk just stuck around and did the interview and everything, like right in front of the camera telling the news anchor everything he saw and how he got here and also giving a shout out to Shadow Base. <laughs> but rather than doing that, which I would have liked to see, but rather than doing that, he instead takes the stealthy route and he just gets out of there, which is something the Hulk is more so known for doing in the past when he's looking for a safe place for Banner so when we see him do it here we already know that it's something that he's good at doing because even getting caught in the background of the news really ain't the move right now but with making his way out of there he eventually crosses path with Spider-Man who at this point has just split up with Eddie Brock in order to get more help from the other heroes after him and Eddie just caught the beat down from Carnage after attempting to get Norman Osborn and it's during this time where the Hulk gets his attention and Spider-Man looks to see whoever it was that threw the water tower at him and he gets there and Hulk's gone and it's just Banner which makes me think like man how many times has the Hulk done this like I'm gonna turn back at the banner but before I do it I'm gonna start some junk but with doing so it's here that Peter Parker and Bruce Banner have the conversation to where Bruce Banner is introduced to the concept of no and really just to the extent that Peter Parker understands at this point which at this point in time is a very bare bones explanation with no being locked up and carnage collecting codices in order to strengthen his connection to no and with doing so even letting him know that no is pretty much like cosmic Satan he's older than time he's the god of the void and immediately this makes Banner think of the one below all which makes a lot of sense because aside from the recent appearance of both the one below all and also Null you also have the strange coincidence of Null awakening and it having its effect on every symbiote and also the resurrection of the immortal Hulk between Secret Empire and Avengers No Surrender which led us on the path to discovering the one below all that could also likely be more than just a coincidence with both of these events with Null and with the one below all occurring fairly close to each other within the broad scope of the entire timeline of the universe from beginning to end and at this point Banner expresses that he sees the connection with it sounding like both of these dark gods share an association much like Banner and his father and with recognizing this Banner admits that if there's even a plausible possibility that they are connected then this is his problem as well which at this point really just adds to the whole reasoning of the Venom symbiote bonding with the Hulk with the two of them now having a common goal and common enemies and so now right after this we get the arrival of the Devil Hulk which at this point in time completes the group of all the different identities who have been showing up through Banner's body since the beginning of the Immortal Hulk series. And with these identities here and present, who's pretty much everyone we talked about on the previous video on the list with Banner made not long after the arrival of the Banner looking Joe Fix It, but with all these Hulks here, it's pretty much time now to take a vote whether they should bond with the symbiote or not. And as far as the Devil Hulk, like from him, it's a no. And so now if you guys remember back when we talked about the whole interview with the Devil Hulk, when Doc Samson was asking the Hulk about this other identity that Bruce had told him about, which was locked away, like this is the one who has taken the lead now and he's essentially the main Hulk that we've been seeing throughout the course of the Immortal Hulk series, who Banner described as the angriest and the most inhuman and the most merciless, but he's also a bit complicated because he also wants what's best for Banner. But with him disagreeing with Banner to allow the symbiote to merge with the Hulk, like with the physical body that they're all sharing, his main reasoning is because with the Hulk and Banner's idea of destroying the world and doing it their way, the Devil Hulk believes that the Venom symbiote will only get in the
the way. And he feels like the Venom symbiote only wants the Hulk for his strength and to detour Banner and the Hulk from their plans only to focus on symbiote business. And Banner of course expresses that we're gonna end the world our way like that hasn't changed. Because remember Banner and the Hulk's agreement on ending the world is very much that same plan that we've seen in Avengers No Surrender which we talked about again in Interview with the Immortal Hulk where their plan is if they do it together then more good people will survive in the end rather than just letting humanity destroy itself. Because even now while they're here in this venue getting ready to make this vote, Devil Hulk tells him like we're supposed to be back at the hotel planning for the next move. And this is essentially why the Devil Hulk said no, but even still the vote was in favor 3 to 1, with Banner, Savage Hulk, and Joe Fixit agreeing with the symbiosis. Which is why once the Venom symbiote gets approved, after this credit check if you will, cause it really is like he's applying for a loan, like loan me the Hulk, but then it's like wait not so fast, we gotta do a background check, and let me see okay that checks out, that checks out, okay approved. Which is really what it feels like. But also with that said, when we do get to see this Venomized Hulk in action, I'm pretty sure something we'll only see take place for like one issue, because it really seems like this entire instance needs to wrap up within that two day window just before Rick Jones wakes up and reveals the location of General 14. But that'll do it for this one guys. Hopefully this helps sew things a little bit closer together because personally I do gotta say out of the different Hulks, the Savage Hulk is definitely the best fit for this venomized version to go up against Carnage and I can't even front like I can't wait to see it. But let me know you guys thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one. Alright, later.